Hello guys, can you hear me? Let's see what else we have here. So, uh, all right, so microphone. So microphone. Oh, you can hear me. All right, all right. Um, if you can hear me, welcome, whatever. Uh, total mess tonight. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, it seems probably that XSplit um, servers have some issues with uh, YouTube live streaming tonight. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Uh, so I'm now trying to uh, stream with the NVIDIA X-Force, uh, which I haven't set up. So I'm trying to set up, you know, while, while I'm doing that. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, terribly, terribly sorry about that, guys. Uh, I don't know what to say, but here we are. So, um, should we start? Is it is it too low or too high the the microphone? Should I fix something? All right. So it's too low. Let's uh, see if I can do something about that. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Maybe like that, like here. Is it is it better right now? Like that. What do you think? Okay, so let's uh, let's try and see if you guys still think it's too low. I can raise it a little bit higher. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Okay, 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 okay. It seems that we have a solution here. I don't know how the quality is going to be. I hope it's going to be good enough. Uh, Please let know everybody what we're trying to do, and uh, let's see if I can add some other stuff here. Sorry about that. Still, you know, trying to to figure out everything tonight. And yeah, all right. So save this and uh, put it on this kind of playlist here. Done. Done. Okay. Save that. More options. Ah, oh, this is terrible. But I'm almost here. Almost here. So we're gonna do something about it. All right. Okay. That is on. Let's. Let's. Okay. All right, I think we are pretty close. Let's also get some stuff like this and save again. Right, so we're here. Okay, so hopefully we have a solution. So, well, first of all, uh, even though the situation is terrible and I'm not uh, good at it, uh, remember, you know, to subscribe somewhere down there. Also, uh, YouTube tells me that I uh, have the uh, enabled the super chat now, which I don't know what it is, but probably it's going to make me very rich. So, you know, do whatever you think about it. Uh, toss a coin to your uh, physics integrator or super chat of plenty, whatever. Anyway, so what are we going to do today? Today, we are going to go to the Nürburgring. Uh, with uh, the the Ferrari 488, we're going to do a sprint race weekend, uh, and we're going to do the first two practice lengths. All right, 95% uh, uh, opponent skill. I, I don't care. I just want some cars around. We'll see about that. Uh, hopefully, the Ferrari 8 will be decent uh, because, as I said, right now. Uh, it's the first time I'm streaming with, with the NVIDIA experience, so no, bear with me. So in realism, uh, I have damage rate at 100% because I want to feel, uh, I want to enable flat spots if there are any because it's linked to the damage rate. Tour field consumption, of course, enabled. Tire sets limited, and this is important. It adds obviously to the immersion and to the realism of everything. 
but it will also help us to make you know a better um, some better solutions in the in the setup with that in mind all right so here we are so normally you could start from the safe setup um, but we will start from the aggressive setup. Uh, why I've choose the Nurburgring and the Ferrari? Because uh, probably 1st of February we're going to do a long uh, six hours race with driver changes. Uh, me and my colleagues buddies, uh, Kevin and uh, Gergo uh, from, from Kunos. And it's going to be probably a Nurburgring or Monza or Bathurst, it dep depends. But, you know, we have to get ready about that. Probably I will stream it. It's going to be fun. And also I need some kind of practice, so because, you know, every day you, you are driving, but you're not pushing yourself. You're just trying to understand how the car feels, if the data is correct, and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, right, so, aggressive preset. And the first thing to do is, as I said, get a habit of the car, uh, get a habit of the circuit, and uh, check the the tire pressures which is the first thing you have to do check the tire pressures so here we go if Bathurst is is you know uh, uh, is out if it's not we're gonna run or Nürburgring or uh, Monza something like that uh, I have no idea about that so don't ask me it depends how we we finish uh, no I don't know I don't know honestly Okay, so I click on drive and the time goes on, so we have one hour and if we are still fresh enough, we're going to have also uh, the second, so at least two hours of practice. Alright, let's go. Hope the frame rate is decent and let's do it. Oops. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Okay. So normally the AI goes uh, slowly when it comes out of the pit, so I will just dive bomb him here and go out and get some fresh air. Right. I hope the the sound volumes are good also from from the simulator, so you can hear the engine and everything. So one thing you could do here is, even though you have the uh, um, the aggressive setup, and normally the ABS is a three, for those first um, laps you could put the ABS at six, because I don't want to you know flat spot the tires on some strains. Uh, breaking marks, breaking points, since, since I'm still, you know, getting the habit of the car and the circuit. So, crank your ABS at 6, you're a little bit safer. So, again, we're gonna do at least um, 3 laps here. And the first thing that you have to, to know is that the tires uh, the, the Pirelli slick tires give you maximum grip. Whoops! Give you maximum grip uh, for the first three or four laps. All right. After that, they have a sudden drop, and uh, they go down in uh, in grip. Not too much, but enough. And then they stabilize and start where gradually, but slowly. So the first. Two or three laps are you have plenty of grip, which right now it's not important for us, but it is important to remind that after two or three laps in in this track, we're gonna have a a, a tire degradation that is, is you know you you can feel it, all right? And it is important because depending on which tires are going down first, usually the rear ones your car will be for a lap or two very oversteery and you have to wait another lap or two as I said so that the front tires also wear down and then you have both of them out of this uh, window of high grip and the car balances itself out again alright so 
we're doing some laps, nothing too important right now. Uh, but it is important to understand, you know, the uh, uh, all, all the various reference points. So, braking, turning in, like this, acceleration, all that stuff, it's stuff that you really have to, you know, to know and you really have to be careful about. You really need to hit them one after another after another. So, this is our second lap out of the pits. We're gonna have a terrible lap time probably. Something around, I don't know, 58, 57, something like that. We don't care about that right now. We're just going to do some decent laps, maybe another one. Yeah, 58, 7, it's very, very low, but we don't care. Oh, it's a very, very long braking point. No, getting a little bit better here. Usually you need to go a little bit more inside here. No, not today. We're not going to use motor today. We're still, you know, trying to figure out the basics. I want you guys to understand how to, you know, understand the, the, the normal things of, of the car and try to, to correct it. So, let's start talking about what we feel with the car right now. The car is pretty neutral, doesn't do strange things, it doesn't want to kill me, which is positive. But I have some understeer. I have some understeer both in, in entry, even though I'm I'm breaking a little bit too late, uh, and I have some understeer also at the exit. It's not too much of an understeer, but it's there. It's, I would like the front end to bite a little bit better than what it does right now. On the other hand, the car is very safe and very stable at the rear right now, so that's that's pretty good. But you can see that I have some issues to exit the turn or to, to point it exactly where I want to. Well, yes, as you said, the motor will be a great uh, topic, but first, you know, we have to cover the basics. I know that some of you guys are way ahead uh, on that stuff, so... But, you know, let's stick to the basics. So again, some understeer that I can cure with some power oversteer, but it's not exactly what I want. So, three laps, I'm going to do the first lap and I'm going into the pits at the first lap. It doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm faster, because I will keep pushing. You know, th this was a better first turn, for example. And I can see that on my delta, that now I'm, the, I'm pushing a little bit, I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, release the brakes here, tuck the in. Like this, so I'm still gaining lap time and so on some space all right between the mic I hear you in here like this on this second kink of this turn I have to accelerate see I have some understeer here I'm trying to fix it but car doesn't do exactly what I want So you can see I'm still gaining lots of time, which means my driving style is still not correct. So it's nothing to do with the setup, all has to do with the driving style yet. And this is always the case, I mean the setup will help you feel more comfortable with the car. But the main lap time comes from your driving. The main problem, you know, between uh, the, the car and the steering wheel is the guy sitting in the middle. Always that. So you see, I was already at six tenths of a second faster, but we don't care, we go into the beats. I've done three laps. This will also learn you where to brake for the beats, so you can, you know, activate the, the limiter. Which in this case was, whoops, in this case was the, uh, 
Orange uh, guardrail. So as I'm going into the pits, I can see my PSI going down by two or three, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 PSI. So that to keep in mind. You see, I'm doing everything realistic. Right, so hit desk and go to the garage. Very good. Setup, current setup. And let's see at, uh, at our uh, pressures. This is the first thing that you have to do. So the first thing is you go in, you do three laps, four laps, then you go uh, into the um, uh, into the car, uh, into the setup, and you check your pressures. So the pressures right now are a little bit on the low side. They seem quite symmetrical, except at the rear, uh, which is good, you know. So let's raise it a little bit. It's 26.5. I would like this to be at least one PSI more. So let's go by one PSI more here. 26.3. And again, 25.8, 26.8. Right. So um, here we have 26.3. So we get the 25.1 and we go 26.1. I can add something, but I'll wait. I'll wait for it. Uh, 25.3. And here we have 25.5. So here I need 2 PSI more to get to the 27s. So 25.5, 26.5, 27.5. I want it to be lower by 0 0.2 because I want to be symmetrical to to the left one. So. 0 0.2 down, 1, 2, and that should give me, you know, a good situation. Now, this is about the pressures. Uh, normally, if you're not, um, if, you, if you're not sure about that, um, guys, don't hurry. D let's not talk about the diff right now. We'll be talking about the diff later on this same practice, but later. One thing at a time. It's very important. One thing at a time. At the end of all of that, I will also show you a case study of a guy that had issues with the setup. So stick with me, right? So first thing, pressures. Second thing, as I told you, I had the car lightly understeery. Understeery in the turning and understeery at the exit. So I would like that to be a little less understeery than that. So what we do next, we go to the aero. Okay. So the aero, as I told you, you modify the right heights and you get big differences in the car. The, more, the biggest difference is at the front. Uh, I cannot lower the front to, because I'm already at the limit uh, of, of, the, of the rules for, for this car, so I'm already down. But if I could, in that case, I wouldn't do it because the front always gives you uh, a big difference, you know, in, in balance. Uh, on the contrary, the rear gives you quite a difference but a little bit less so it's more I would not say it's fine-tuning but it's uh, less different than than the front one so in this case anyway I can do much uh, to lower the, the front to get more front balance so I will raise the rear by one click just one click that's all so we did the tire pressures and we raised the rear by just one click let's go back again All right. Yes, uh, PSI pressure drops uh, during the pitter entrance. We know that it drops by around um, three, uh, 0 0.3 PSI, 0 0.3 PSI. This we will calculate it again at the second round. So let's go, let's go in, start the car. Always check that the pit limiter is on. And let's go. Hey, noble mate. No homo. <laughs> uh, blue flag, so someone is coming. Yeah, let's break a little bit earlier. Always check, you know, your mirrors if you have them or your radar or the whatever. It's always a good thing. And let's go. So already you can see, even with cold tires. Oh, damn, I did, a, I did an error. So let's go back. Fuck. Ah, sorry. Oops. So let's go back. Sorry about that. 
completely miss the immersion and everything. Very important. Since we are having um, limited tire sets, you need to get back to tire set 1. Because we want to use the same tire set again and again and again. Also because, you know, we, it will give us a situation of the, uh, of the wear. And you can see already that it's wearing a bit more at the rear. We're still at 2.9, which means we are still at the high grip range. I think the if you get out of the um, uh, of the high uh, grip range when you go under 2.9, 2.85. Those are the millimeters in depth. So less depth you have, it means your tire is more more, more wear out. You know. So right now we we went from three millimeters fresh tire to 2.9 at the back at 2.92 at the front and uh, it's not too big of a gap but we know that the rears uh, is going to you know wear out before the front so the car will be a little bit more oversteery on the next two of uh, two laps maybe so uh, we need to you know drive for more than two laps we're gonna do four or five laps now all right so we have all our, our, our stuff and let's go you can see Again, here uh, on the um, on the tire uh, hood, that we have dry one. You can see dry one, which means we have still the first tire set. All right, so let's go. Look behind, no problem. Clear to clear to go. Let's get our tires. Heat up first. So as I said now we're gonna do at least four or five laps. So that we can wear out the tires and see how it's going. Um, I think I will leave the ABS to four, level four right now. And see from there on what we're gonna do. Again, makes no sense to do this kind of work if you are not used to uh, driving on the, on the circuit. You know, you, you have to have some experience on the circuit, you have to know your uh, reference points. I repeat, reference points is the most important part in driving in a circuit. 80% of your lap time is reference points. If you're not having reference points for every little thing, then you're doing it wrong guys you really need to get your reference points as good as possible there are there are situations where we don't have any reference points like for example uh, the braking for the last third year uh, but you know take as much reference points as you can study on board uh, replays on the YouTube on real cars because pretty much are the same on simulators whatever I mean they're out there go find them do us a research and start them or look here whatever I do uh, or look you know there are plenty of drivers that, that are much faster than me and more more uh, have more practice and uh, are better so go go and watch them I can feel my braking zones are a little bit long and uh, it seems like um, especially at the initial uh, braking the car doesn't stop so fast so that is something that I have to you know take a note and check if I can improve uh, my uh, brake ducts because probably uh, the uh, the brakes are not in temperature when I'm arriving from the not so long but long enough straight finish straight Sì, va benissimo Enrico, capisco che non lo facciamo in italiano, però che faccio? Lo faccio in greco visto che sono greco? Dai, basta con questa storia, insomma. So, sorry for that guys, but we have some guys that I keep wanting, you know, that I do everything in their language. So what I have to do, I have to learn all the languages of the, of the earth, it's just not possible, I mean. 
it, it becomes you know tiresome after after uh, the the eleventh or the end time that they are asking you for that. Anyway, let's move on. So you know you see already I'm not really driving very well, but I'm already at the same lap times as before. Which means that probably the car reacts better for me right now. That's good. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that slow even if you know that was just uh, a norm. I, I mean, I'm not not very careful lap. Okay, let's try to see what is going on. By the way, the fact that the tires are, are getting, you know, more worn out. Oops, had some. Uh, also means that you should expect a little bit of, you know, to, to, to the car to get slower. So if you're doing similar lap times than before or even improving, it means that uh, your driving and the setup helps you to improve which is very good Yeah, I'm already getting better, so... So, let's start analyzing the, the car behavior. So... I can feel that the, the front end, so the changes we, we did are already pretty good. Uh, the front end bites better. But there is some instability. I don't know what's going on. So maybe I should check again my tire pressures. Or the changes also on the right height and the balance of the car change also the tire pressure. So every time you go out, you have to check and see what's going on with your tire pressures. You can see already on the tire hood that my tire pressures are not so balanced anymore. At the front they are pretty good, although a bit too high but they are balanced left and right at the rear not so much so we'll have to check that and see what we did wrong well for sure the the front end is much better than before the rear helps me to you know turn the corner out yeah Let's keep lapping. Let's do a, a couple of laps more and see what's going on. Oh, I ride way too fast here. My bad. Yeah. see what's going on on the chat because I don't have the chat anymore here I don't know what's going on with the uh, uh, with this streaming program but as long as you guys can see everything clearly then we're fine let's also concentrate a little bit and do a decent lap so now I have a tiny bit of power oversteer uh, Obviously, I'm not driving very well, but it's also the fact that, you know, I'm going, uh, even though I'm going to the, uh, to the accelerator uh, with some ease, whoops, I still have some, I can, I can hear the, uh, the traction control also, see, also here if I, whoops, I have some power oversteer, 
So I would like to, to fix that, I would like some extra traction if possible without having, you know, the front end uh, going wide. So I need some extra traction but keep the balance of the car as it is now because I'm, I'm happy with that. See, I'm, I'm driving badly and I'm still doing the same lap times as before, so means, you know, it's a good thing for now. Yeah, I'm doing so many errors here. Uh, don't look at my um, ratings here, guys, because as usual, they are dev ratings. We are doing tests, we're doing lots of stuff, so they keep changing. Just forget them. I'm trying also different gears, so for example here I did all, all in third gear to see how it's going. Don't really like it. Alright, so the main issue I see with my temperatures and my pressures on the tires is practically the uh, the rear the rear right. So I will go and change that, but let's let me understand what else is not going so well. So, as I said, I'm feeling this uh, power oversteer. When I'm go hard on the on the power, I have uh, a little bit of oversteer. Another thing that you guys, okay, you mean, okay, what does it mean I feel oversteer? Is it enough? Is it less than enough? What that means? So here's what I usually do, and what I also uh, uh, advise you to do. So when you are on the apex of of, uh, of the turn, like here, uh, to have a good, a well-mannered car, a good uh, handling balance, you want to uh, release uh, the accelerator, right, uh, or even touch a tiny bit the brake pedal, and you want the nose to go in, but not too much. Uh, the uh, the closing of the of the racing line that happens in that situation, so the nose goes goes in like that, should be gentle, and it shouldn't cause you too much trouble. You know, to to control it. If it causes you too much trouble, then it means that you know the car is doing stuff that you cannot handle. So again, as I said, it's not. It doesn't mean that the car is not fast. Uh, it means that the setup is not good for you for your. Uh, reflexes for your driving style for whatever so this thing right here is not good you know uh, the same if you go on the accelerator if you go on the accelerator you go you want the car to stabilize but not oversteer too much and then you want if you keep you know pushing on the accelerator you want the car to have a tiny bit of uh, of uh, oversteer power oversteer but not too much you know so you want the car to change its habits depending on what you do on the pedals while you are on the limit of the apex of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the turn. But you need to understand that if you do it, uh, if the car uh, reacts way too abruptly, then something is wrong with the setup that you have for your driving style and the situation where you are. So this is how you, you do the setup. You go on the apex, you leave it, for example, costing, and if the car costs without going, you know, into oversteer, this is good. If it costs with, without going into understeer, it's, it's good. Uh, if it does it too much, and you have to control it badly, then you need to, you know, do something with the setup. The same, again, on, on the apex, uh, you go on the accelerator, if it understeer too much, you need to do something. If it oversteer too much, you need to do something. You have to find uh, the correct compromise that, you see, you can control the tendency of the car to, to do whatever you ask him to do. So this is your first hint that, you know, something is, is not correct. So now I'm going to go into the, uh, into the pits and correct the, the pressures and see also how we are in terms of uh, tire um, 
tire wear. Also, as I said, I have a little bit of power oversteer now. I would like to fix that if it's possible. So let's see. So let me go into the pits. Again, very good uh, you know, occasion to learn how to pit. Always do that before a race. If you go to a truck, this is where I brake and limiter and we're in. So we are at 27.7, 27.8, pretty good at the front. 27.4, 28.2, so we're a little bit too high at the rear right. Already at 28.0. So stop here and go back to the garage. All right, so let's go back to the garage. And uh, first thing to do is fix this one. So we were 28.3, right? So let's go down by one PSI at 26.3 and then raise it by one, let's say, and stay here. The aero balance was pretty good, I'd like that. On some cars you need to do more, on some cars we need to do less, but it was pretty good. So, what I'd like to do now, um, so, ah yeah, the ducts, right, so I said that the, the brake ducts, probably I had the braking a little bit not so good as I wanted, so let's go down, down a click, usually you can, do, you can go down two clicks on the rear because, you know, the rear has less braking power, so less friction, so it needs less air. Uh, there are different ducts also, so the number two brake ducts at the rear isn't the same as the number two brake ducts at the front. So you need to find out what. G generally, three and two is good enough. Let's go back to mechanical grip. So, as I said, I would like the car to be more, you know, uh, more traction. So let's, we also have in this uh, circuit lots of curbs. So let's see what we can do. Let's try to um, make the car softer. So I'll make the car softer at the rear. Uh, 120, just one click. 151, but I'll do two clicks at the front. No, it's too much because you see it goes down way too much. So just one click at the rear, I'm going to click at the front. We'll go down all together. Uh, here's another thing you can do. Another thing you can do is uh, play with the differential. The preload of the differential works like that. Um, the, the locking of the differential is fixed. You cannot change that because the homologation of the cars in GT3 uh, asks for a fixed differential locking in power and costing. But what you can do is change the preload. And the preload means that until the difference in torque between left and right exceeds the number that you have here, uh, until that moment, the, the differential is completely locked. When it exceeds, then it starts moving and starts locking on the lock percentage that it has uh, from, from the clutches and, and gears in it. So until that point, uh, the differential is completely locked. So, what it means? Uh, it means that... Um, if I lower the preload here, let's put it to 100, and here's what's going to happen. In acceleration, uh, the, the two tires will start, you know, getting torque from the engine. Uh, at some point, the inner one will want to spin more because it has less grip. And when the difference between the two of them in torque exceeds the 100 Newton meters, then it will open and go to the locking percentage, whatever that is, from the actual differential. So, at it initially, it will, you know, make the tires spin together and then opens up to go to the other uh, locking percentage. So, now it will open sooner because I've lowered the preload. Before that, it would, it would need a difference of 170 newton meters. Now it will need a difference of 100. So it will spin together and then open earlier. 
which means that my inner tire will spin earlier. This will lose me a little bit of, you know, motion, uh, forward motion, but it will make the car more stable, uh, at, at, um, at especially at, at high speeds. Uh, at low speeds too, uh, because, because instead of, you know, turning with the right and making also, turning with the ex external wheel and making also the external wheel uh, sliding, which means oversteer, it will dissipate some of the power, the torque of the engine on the internal, which doesn't have any way much power, and leave, hopefully, the external wheel with still lateral grip. And that will make me, you know, control the car a little bit more. All right, so... Uh, everything good on the chart, all right? So let's go... Oops. Watch it. Again. Tire set number one. Uh, by the way, we can check again our... Uh, tire work 279 to 75 here and uh, 274 still a decent difference between them not not too much so we're going we're going pretty well uh, so all right let's try it car is uh, softer let's see what happens pit limiter is on and uh, let's go So you see we still have 25 minutes left so this also you know gives you a time limit to do your changes to do the stuff uh, it makes you work more efficiently at least uh, in my point of view it's not just you know go in change the setup go out again go in change the setup no you have to think about stuff you have a limit you know that you have one hour or two hours if you're doing two sessions uh, to, to check stuff which is good whoa <laughs> I wasn't looking at you and oh boy the oversteer still cold tires and now they're also uh, dirty so I need to take it a little bit carefully whoops yeah so let's see you can hear the uh, the pebbles and the dirt on the tires so until you hear that it means that your tires are still dirty and you have to be careful because it's gonna slide a bit so watch out Okay, go up. You see the car jumps a little bit around now. Which makes sense, it's softer. But let's see how it will react in the turns. Uh, as you saw, we're still doing one click at a time, two click at a time, not much. It's very, very important, especially in a Seto Corsa Competizione. You really want to do very, very small differences every, every time. Okay, so here we go. Tires are getting into temperature. Already I saw some better traction here at the slow speed turn. Braking is much better now. I had to modulate the braking because I was going, I was stopping way earlier than before, which is very good. A little bit of oversteer, but not too much. Easy, very easy to control. Good turn in here on the very slow. Very, very good. So the traction on the slow beats is much better. Car is a little bit. I thought the car was a little bit nervous here, uh, which make me brake later because I had to. You know, this is why you need stability. Uh, the exit of that fast turn make me uh, brake a little bit um, later than I wanted to because I was busy, you know, controlling the car, and that obviously made me arrive longer uh, inside the turn. The 
traction is very good. Traction is very good. Oh, 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 the car is wobbly at, at medium speed here. It's very good here, but or I did badly the line, the racing line on the on the uh, chicane, or the car was wobbly. Braking is much better than before, which is very positive. So again, our our change was good. Traction again, very good here. Go in. Change in directions is a little bit slow, sluggish. You saw that I had to wait a little bit for the car. Again here, I'm kind of a little bit nervous. But my lap time is much better. On worn tires, which, you know, it's very, very good. Much better lap time. I'm driving also better. Oof. Oof. Not so good here. You saw you saw that I lost lots of time into that uh, uh, Schumacher S. So there are some goods here. There are some bads. The car is wobbly when going out uh, of the of the curbs. Uh, Sluggish in left right situations. Let's see here what happens. Yeah, I really have to concentrate well here and control the car. But the car is very good on long, slow turns like this. So, personal fast already, which is very good. Oh, very, very long. My bad, my bad here. You see, I have this kind of entry oversteer all the time. So, in, in situations like that, it's not a big deal in slow, slow speed. Also, the car is a little bit sluggish. But in medium to fast corners, I have oversteer, entry oversteer. Oh, like that, you see? If, if I'm not paying attention and I'm not very, you know, at, very smooth, I get some entry oversteer and it happens in all medium to fast turns which which is a which is a pattern Th this is the patterns that you you're trying to to find out you know uh, when you're driving like that you're trying to find patterns if something happens just once that's not a pattern that's is you see that's the problem but the fact that in every turn in I have this situation this is a pattern and it doesn't really happen at slow turns like this you know 120 kilometers per hour it happens in faster uh, turns so that means I have a problem with aerodynamic stability when I turn in because it unbalances the car because if I don't have this you see I have to stay on the gas to, to control the car. If I don't have this here, then it means uh, my, my mechanical grip is decent. Uh, but since it's happening on the fast turns, something is bad in the, uh, in the aerodynamic balance. Yeah, if I'm not correct, if I'm not uh, careful at the high speeds, then something's going wrong. All 
Alright, so, so let's get get back to the to the pits. Um Yeah, you see? Again the same thing here. If I'm not paying attention, then always something is happening, which is you know bad, especially for, for a race uh, setup that we're trying to do. So let's go back to the pits, analyze what is happening. Uh, check our tire pressures as usual. A bit of nervous there. Yep. Yeah. Tire pressures are not too bad, as I can see. They seem decent. And let's go in. Again, practice again. The entrance of the pit. Always a good thing to practice it for, for a race. Get as fast as you can and be prepared, right? Remember, pit limiter goes on only in first gear. Because if you put the pit limiter in second gear, many cars will just, you know, make the engine die because the revs will be uh, so, so low. So, pit limiter uh, activates only first gear and deactivates automatically on those cars, real cars too, uh, in second gear. Alright, so stop here. Okay. And I'll pause like that so we get a little bit more time. So, what happens here? Um, good car, good traction, bit sluggish in left-right situations in very fast uh, seconds. Um, I didn't like that it was you know I was like like this <clears throat> sorry about that going like that and the car was sluggish I had to wait for the car reactions control and then go mm, we're talking about you know one or two tenths of a second but that's important as we said because one two tenths of a second makes all the difference around the lap makes you know two seconds difference around the lap so um, car a bit sluggish and uh, we also had another issue. We had uh, oversteer in turn in at medium to fast turns. Why this happens? Well, as you saw, we made the, um, the suspension of the car softer. What does it mean? It means that the body of the car also moves more, especially the rear that is much softer now. It means that when you're braking, the rear suspension can, you know, move more up and down because it is softer obviously uh, it means that when i'm turning in braking the rear goes up rolls and moves all the aerodynamic balance more to the front than i would like and this creates the car you know wobbly and unstable it means that i have to wait for the car do corrections and in the meantime i cannot you know make my line perfect and go on the accelerator sooner so all of that means that i'm losing i'm losing time all right okay so let's see what we can do um return to the garage setup current setup pressures are pretty decent um Back again, tire set one. So, and we are 269, 265 here, and uh, 261. Two, I'm, I'm reading the the inner, uh, the mid. Uh, uh, yeah, not not too much of a difference. That's pretty good. So, here's what we're gonna do. Um, I wanted to show you something, but I didn't bring my my. Um, um, I had a, 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 a big, uh, how to say, whatever, uh, sorry about that, I will use the keyboard. So what I want to do, when you have um, the car, the, the sashes flex, you have the car, so the car gets some force from one, um, from one uh, tire, uh, the suspension goes up, and the suspension goes up also makes the... Um, the flex uh, also makes the sassis flex and they go up together okay 
So how can we limit the success flex? Well, until now we knew that uh, anti-roll bars control the roll of the car, but they can also control a little bit of the flex, making the chassis more rigid. How they do that? So here's the situation. So normally you get a bump or a roll, the suspension goes up and flexes, let's say that this is the body, flexes the body, okay? So normally that's what happens. But if you take the anti-roll bar and now this is the left, uh, sorry, the right, and this is the left, okay? Uh, and you fix it somewhere. So w you fix it at the body. U usually the roll bars are fixed in two points of the body. That means that the suspension will go up here and will try to go up also on the other, uh, go down on the other side. And that will make also, uh, w will control the flex also. So you, instead of having just one, th one part of the body going up, you get them both doing the same thing, you know? So what we're going to try here is we're going to make the rear anti-roll bar much stiffer, which is counterintuitive, but it works now. It will make both the sasses flex more, which is more difficult for the sasses to flex more for in both situations. So as a result, the sasses will flex a little bit less you know, as a result of difference between left and right. And uh, it will also limit my role. Limiting my role which mean, will mean probably that, you know, the, the inner part of the diffuser will not go as high as before and make the car probably a bit stable. So here is the difference. Here is why in a certain course of competition especially you have to make as many compromises as possible. There are tons of compromises to be, to be made. Uh, it's true that a, a stiffer anti-roll bar uh, will get off some mechanical grip, but on the other hand, it will give you some extra uh, aerodynamic uh, stability, which will give you more grip. So what we're doing now here is to try and find if there is a different compromise we can do on that. If that doesn't work, then we're going to stiff, uh, stiff up all uh, the suspension with the wheel rates. Okay? So let's see what we can do about that. So, we leave everything as it was. We're just going up on the uh, anti-roll. You can tell me, okay, Aris, you said one click at a time, but here we did, you did a lot of change in the real anti-roll bar. It's true, but uh, as you can see, the anti-roll bar goes up to 50 in, uh, um, in the Ferrari. And when you have so many little clicks, it means that a tiny click has very little effect. You can, you know, go up 10 times at a, uh, at a time. So me going from 2 to, to 25 or something like this is like doing two clicks instead of, you know, what. In other cars you see you have four or five clicks maximum and that's it. Depends on the car. Right, let's go. Again, the same thing. Try one again. Pit stop enabled. We have 10 more minutes, so let's see what we can do. Yeah, mainly if you have a soft chassis, you can try, you can try and, you know, raise a little bit the anti-roll bar, both at front and rear. So let's see. Oh, so now the car was a little bit faster, but let's first, you know, bring the tires in temperature and see what's going on. Oh, it seemed pretty stable. I was afraid to go in, but it seemed pretty stable. car also looks stable on slow turns too. It seems to have less wobble than before. Ah, not bad. Not bad at all. A bit of understeer, maybe. 
Ah, here's the obvious too. Um, it wasn't bad, but you can see that it jumped a little bit on on that curve. But you know, it, it's a it's a high curve, so. Okay, let's let's see this. This is the first uh, lap with decent tires. Let's see. I think I've lost a little bit of uh, traction. Yeah, you can see that. No, no, not bad, not bad. You can see the thing that we were saying before, so... Um, when you release the accelerator, the car should go inside the turn, but not by much, not by much. I'm making a mess with gear changes and I'm not really concentrating, I'm not driving too well at all. And I'm slower. Let's see if I can concentrate and improve a little bit. Oh, oh that was nice. Hmm. I have some oversteer if I force the car to go in, but that's me, that's not the car. I was forcing the car to go in. I have to see if I can make uh, a better compromise. So, brake here. Car reacts pretty good. A little bit of oversteer in left right. Lap time seems good. I have some understeer in turning now. It changes it changes the the balance, the aero balance of the car, you saw that. Had a tiny understeer in turn in. have to work a lot with the steering wheel though. Just a tiny bit of, of corrections and the car follows the line. Yeah, stupid change gear. Not too bad, not too shabby. A little bit of understeer again, and turn in. Oh uh, yeah, I'm a tiny bit slower than before. Yeah, I'm not driving so well. Up, a little bit of oversteer here. I think the rears are getting a bit too hot. You can see there from the temperatures, they are getting a bit too hot while I'm driving. So 
which means I'm, I'm sliding a little bit. Also remember that, you know, stiffer car means more temperature on the tire, so... I'm not driving very well. Starting to get tired, but that's okay. Three minutes left, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna enter the setup, and we're gonna prepare and save our setup for the next session. So that we can, you know, move on. Alright. Not too bad if I control myself, but... So let's go in. All right. So, what what we found out here? Um, we we practically cured the uh, turning oversteer. We have occasionally even a little bit of too much turning understeer, which means, you know, we can control the aero platform also from the sassis flex and uh, the, um, and the, um, the roll of the car. But the car, if I'm a little bit too harsh, which I am, because I'm not very well trained and uh, haven't done much practice neither now, it's uh, f a tiny bit skittish sometimes. So, also, we have more more temperature on on the tires because you know uh, uh, the the um, uh, the anterior bar is stiffer. So let's see if we can find a compromise. Right. So return to the garage. Let's save this setup. Then I will you know so send you uh, the the save the, the setups. So let's call this I don't know stream. Stream zero one. Okay, let's save this. Uh, let's go back to the current setup and lower it to be the pressures here. I'll go down by zero point five. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Actually, I want to go down another one or two clicks here because I saw it occasionally it goes a little bit higher. Um, Another thing I want to do, so here I'm going to go down by 5 and I would like to do something different. I would like to make the wheel rate stiffer and see if I control the aero balance of the car better with stiffer wheel rates, which actually are stiffer springs, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go two clicks up here, two clicks up here and two clicks up here, maybe it's too much. I would go just one and one. Okay. So I will I will try this. Now probably I'm gonna have some overs to here uh, because I've gone I've gone two clicks here and one click here. So I will try to do a click on the bump stop rate. So what is this? Since we're waiting, you know, for the next session free. Uh, free session. So, bump stops is exactly as you see them here in, in the little graph. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but you have a little telemetry uh, thingy here. Uh, so you have the suspension moving, and you have a bump stop which is fixed. All right. So the suspension moves. This is the spring here. At some point, the suspension touches the bump stop. Bump stop is uh, usually made of rubber, and it is elastic. So the elasticity, the stiffness of the elastic uh, rubber uh, is added on the stiffness of the spring. So when it touches, it starts compressing, you know, the bump stop and this adds stiffness. Why you need the bump stop? Because they are not linear. Uh, they are not even a fixed value as it was in Assetto Corsa 1. 
The Shotokan Shoko Petitione, as in reality, they are uh, very variable and they are doing a hyperbolic curve like this. Okay? And the, the bump stop rate is how stiff they are. It's the force that they provoke at 10 millimeters compression. The, the number there is the force at 10 millimeters compression. We don't give the stiffness rate, but we give the, the force because the rate is not fixed as the springs. It's variable, okay? So the, the more you go in and compress the rubber, the, stiff, uh, the stiffer they, they become. Uh, so this is the rate, okay? So how stiff it is, it's the rate. How much force it creates, it's the rate. Um, no, you cannot tweak the bump stop rate down. Now, the bump stop range, as you can see here, if I change this, the red line moves up. Now, the distance between... The yellow is your suspension, where your suspension stays. And the red is where your bump stop sta stays. The, the gap you see between the yellow and the red is the so-called suspension window, all right? suspension window. We call it bump stop range. It would be better to call it bump stop window, but it goes too long in German. Sorry, German guys, it goes like something like, you know, long like that. It wouldn't enter the user interface, so we've called it bump stop range. Anyway, um, so what that means? It means that uh, you can control how thick is your bump stop or where is positioned, usually how thick it is, and you have some spring movement of the suspension before it hits the bump stop. On those cars, they are extremely pitch sensitive, LMP ones even more, you know, especially on cars that they don't have the third uh, spring solution, which is a different suspension geometry. You want practically the front suspension to practically ride over the bump stop all the time. All the cars, the real cars are made like this. They ride on the bump stops all the time, okay? So, um, so th this is this is what you want. So you want the the red. Whoops. Just a second. We have to switch um, the. Uh, oh, we're first. Yeah. Uh, we have to switch uh, the um, session here. Practice two. Practice two. All right. So as I was saying, let's go back to the setup. We're still on the same. Um, you practically want the red line to be usually as close as possible to um, to the yellow line, which means that once you're out on the track, the suspension will instantly be and ride on the bobstom, and you have more stiffness. Uh, this is to to control, uh, you know, the the pitch of of the car. Um, Obviously, you say, yeah, but what happens when I'm turning? I don't want the bump stop because they make the car stif stiffer. So, you know, more stiff at the front means more, more understeer. Well, you have to find a compromise. And also remember that the pitch is controlled by both the bump stops because the whole car goes, you know, moves forward, uh, moves down the front one. So it controls by both the bump stops. The roll, when you're in turn, controls only one of the bump stops. So it's, you know, uh, less stiff. It's softer. Um, so this is this is what uh, you got. So for in the question, very well, uh, Antelope replied. Uh, yes, whenever you change in uh, the right head, you don't have to change again the bump stops, because that's the whole point. We we worked behind the scenes. You don't see that, but it's pretty complex. Uh, the setup UI uh, user interface works to recreate all the values on the bump stops and the cambers and the uh, the tow uh, to the same values that you had before changing you know the um, the right head so this is why because in reality you have the engineer looks at the telemetry data looks at how the driver works get the feedback and says to the mechanics you know what i want the front right head one millimeter lower uh, they tell this to the mechanics, it, it gives them the setup sheet uh, paper and um, uh, you, so the mechanics know that they have to keep the whole car as it is. 
they will, they will not go there and, you know, lower the car and leave everything as it is. No, they will lower the car or raise the car and then they will rework all the alignment, all the bump stop uh, differences, everything has to be as before because the engineer just asked for a, red, a right height change, not for everything. So everything has to be as before. This is what the setup user interface does in, in a set of course of It's pretty complex. Fernando Barbarossa had, you know, headache for, for days and days to make it work, but he managed it. Um, all right, so yeah, try to, to keep that um, as, as close as possible to the, the red one to the yellow one. There are some cars that can do without that, uh, like for example the Mercedes. The Mercedes has tons and tons of anti-dive in suspension geometry. The first time I saw the suspension geometry I was like, no, there, there is a typo here. You cannot have, you know, the uh, uh, suspension arms inclined like, like this. It doesn't make sense. So I had to double check, talk with the, with the guys, double check the data, and it is like that. So they make it work. I don't know how, but it works. So it's more unique than, than, everything, than anything else. Uh, and yeah, in the Mercedes you don't have to uh, have the bump stop rate so close. You can, you know, live with two, three or four, something like that. But all the other cars, you know, as close as possible. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So, okay. Uh, let's, as I said, we have the, the um, spring stiffer, stiffer anti-roll bars, a little bit less here. Uh, we go back and get our tire set number one and let's see how it is and then we're going to switch tire set and see how it reacts because we are in the second uh, practice session and we can use another tire set. Remember, you have like five tire set for the whole weekend. So race, you know, you have to do at least one pit stop in this race. So you need at least two fresh or semi-fresh tires. You need two fresh or semi-fresh tires for, for the qualifying, you know. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. It keeps you focused, keeps you understanding what you do. Okay, let's go back and uh, drive. Green light. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, okay, get go. Go, go, go. Pit stop limiter and uh, let's go. Let's go. Break, 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 break. <laughs> so, car stiffer. Normally means that my uh, our aero platform will be more stable. In, so, especially in high speed turns, I should get a more, uh, maybe not to my liking, um, handling, but the handling will be, you know, this is it, and it won't change, won't wobble too much. What did we do? We did a, we did a 27 low, something like this, uh, 57. So let's try to do something better. Yeah, the car looks good. Uh, looks pretty good here. Stable. A little bit stiff. I can feel it also on the feedback that gives a little bit more harsh, you know, reactions. But let's see. Yeah, I have to be a little bit faster here. Good traction. Tiny bit of oversteer on time free. Oh, oh, that was oversteer here. But I did downshift inside the turn, so 
let's keep that in mind and see how it's going on. some uh, sand over there, tricky and dangerous. Oh, Nils is here. Hi, Nils. How you doing, mate? Great guy. For the hardware, for the physics, mate. Really, really good guy. Very good over there. Oh, 57.4, which means we are a little bit slower. I think we did a 56 high. Let's see if we can do something about it. so good here. Ah. But a bit higher pressures everywhere. Uh, went way too fast here, but still the car, you know, manages. I'm, I'm driving badly, but the car manages. It's not bad. Remember, I have the uh, already pretty worn down tires from the last practice session. I'll do uh, another lap. Hopefully a better one. Let's see where we are. I could use a tiny bit more front-end grip at some situations. Way too late. You know what? I'm gonna try a little bit of more rear brake bias at the end. So let's see if this is the knob. 57%. Uh, seems to work. Yeah. You see, again, we were like 57.6. Now we're at 57%. Small, small changes at a time. Don't overdo it. Lap time seems similar.
Oh, that was me doing stupid things. No, okay. much curb there, have to use less and you can see already on the delta that's going down. bad for uh, very worn out tires. We're gaining also some time here. Yeah. As you can see I can gain about three tenths of a second four. Probably if I drive better I can gain a little bit more. So I'll just go in the pitch round and see what our next move is going to be. So as you can see I'm trying you know to to get uh, better in, uh, uh, in in pit entry it all pays if you can do it so what we saw here is that at least in these conditions they're probably a little bit hotter than before our front tires are a tiny bit hotter and that gives gives me some understeer so I return to the garage current setup I will go a bit lower one two three and one two three here the balance left and right is pretty good so I like it um, now I will add a little bit of extra negative from camper a little bit let's see if it works I'm not so sure in this car if it's gonna work in mine five in my minus four but it might work and uh, I want to add a little bit of uh, rear uh, tall so let's use something like 0 0.2 degrees and see if this helps me a little bit because I'm tired I'm slow I'm not very precise so I want to throw the car a little bit more violent into the turn but I want the car to react in the uh, in the rotation a bit slower so I don't have to be so much precise uh, normally I wouldn't do that but I feel that right now I'm not you know uh, very good at it the rest of the things here seems to work well. Uh, yeah, let's put that down to 57 that we tried and we liked before that. Uh, and let's do a couple of laps more and then we're, gonna, we're going to uh, modify, we're going to, to uh, put new tires and see how we are. So we, we made the car stiffer. We made the car, uh, we changed a tiny bit, we, we, we played a lot with the... Uh, with the with the tire pressures uh, looking good and we're still on on very worn tires uh, let me check yeah tire set one again we are 2.44 you see 2.36 at the rear we're we are going at around two millimeters uh, depth so it means that we have worn out one millimeter of depth it's quite a lot all good guys on the chat, do you like it? Do you have any special questions? Let me know. And uh, alright, let's see. And let's go. Oh, blue flag. 
cars are coming. Okay, let's follow this uh, Aston Martin here. Maybe now we have too much front end grip, but it's early. Let's wait. Let's see the pressures once the, the tires are hot. What's going on? A little bit of power oversteer. Maybe I should start dealing with that. Hmm. I could touch the brakes and uh, make the car rotate. Maybe a little bit too much for my liking, but the tires are warm, so let's see what we're gonna, what's going to happen. It's too much braking here. Ooh, oversteer, power oversteer. Yeah, I like it, but it's not, it's not good for the lap times. If I can get a better exit than him, no, not really. But I'm very close to the lap time, so that means that you know, car reacts well. If you're going to crash to someone, go for the outside. Do not go for the inside. You see how I've moved to the outside because the guy, it's it's ahead of you. It's gonna make the turn, right? And uh, he's going for the inside. If you're going very close to him and you see that, oh my god, I'm gonna crush him, go for the outside. The right. on the right. Oh really, mate? <laughs> mm. Now I start feeling, you know, the tires being a little bit too slidey now. Uh, I cannot really overtake here so I'll go back out and wait see go for the outside it's always good for everybody. Go outside. Don't go inside. See, he has fresh tires. I have issues. I'm faster, but I cannot outbreak him. I cannot exit faster in the turns than him. So I have to study him and see where I can, you know. Yeah, I will trust my lights. Top, top, top. Go away! Go away! Whoa! Let's see if I can get him here at the Schumacher SS. 
and dive bomb him. Yeah, I'm faster. I'm faster. Ah, oh, damn! I have to go in the outside. Yeah, Ooh, haha. that was nice. Oh, finally some pressure. Let's see what the car can do. <laughs> Rocket ladder. Yeah, I used to do that. Car is a little bit slidey, but not too much. Um, what I can do? I won't do anything from now. Turn in here, go on the accelerator. Yeah, it's a bit slidey, but I can feel now that those are the tires and not the actual balance of the car, because the balance is good. The tires simply cannot keep the car in position, you know, they let go together. And I'm faster, still. Which means I think we have a good balance here. Yeah. Yeah, but faster. Ah, that was bad. Okay. <laughs> Phew. Bit lucky over there. Good. Still half a second faster than before, which is not bad on those tires. Yeah. I ah, yeah, see. I couldn't rotate the car properly over there. Lost some time, but I gained some on the exit. Wasn't that bad. 57 flat. Terrible up time usually because I can do 56, but whatever. Uh, all right, so yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have to go back to the pits. Don't don't do stupid stuff. Rally, rally, immersion. Go back to the pits. <laughs> uh, guys, I see no questions on the chat, which means you are probably very bored. So let's spice things up a little bit and uh, you know maybe put new tires. Now the Bentley is the biggest car. Actually when I when I want to to play, you know, to to practice and I don't have many occasions to practice this is why I'm doing the streams because finally like that you know I'm saying who cares about if you're tired or not go there talk to the people have some fun yourself and play the game because otherwise it's every day trying stuff putting in inputs putting data working go out so at some point you forget how how the game actually is how it's cool to drive you know so you need to do it. So in the pits now. Also in the pits, you know, with uh, used tires, which is always a very good thing to do because this is what is gonna it's gonna happen in re in your in your races. So you know practice the whole thing because um, lap times is all about big small details right racing 
is even more about small details. All the small details that here and there in a long race gives you, you know, the uh, the upper hand. So think about it. Okay, so let's stop and return to grass. Right. So. Uh, Any recommendations on videos to learn ACC setup basics? Uh, what am I doing here? I don't know. I, I mean, you no, know, subscribe and uh, watch my my channel. Uh, yes, I'm gonna talk about dumbbells. They will need a completely dedicated stream about them and uh, possibly understand them myself. <laughs> everybody, every. I mean, there are probably very a very small uh, number of people that they actually understand numbers. Anyway, so I won't change anything on the setup, uh, but it's time to put new tires and possibly lower the fuel to something like 30, you know, like that, which is going to be the fuel for the qualifying. You know, you put fuel for the whole qualifying. You don't go in with 5 liters, 10 liters, go out, put fuel for the whole all qualifying. Um, and uh, yeah, let, let's see what we can do. Let's try uh, semi-qualifying. Let's see where we are. So the car is going to be pretty different now. So I won't instantly try to understand what the car does because I, I will first have to, you know, uh, get used to it with my driving. Oh, so much traction. <laughs> oh, so much grip. Much wow. Such stability. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Fresh tires sounds good. Alright, yeah. Oh, that's fast. Oh, that's so fast that I, I practically went over the over the Kerber <laughs> and maybe on the grass. I'm breaking way too much for all the braking zones. Way too early. Oh, that was very nice. Great car now. Tiny, tiny bit of power oversteer. I like that. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing like a new fresh of tires. Oh, <laughs> look at this car right now. Amazing. Gonna eat that Porsche alive right now. So you can see the delta is re already green because I went out of that turn so much faster than before. Come on, come on, you're so slow. Move! That's the problem. That's the problem in real life, you know. You have fresh tires, you have two or three laps to make them work and make your qualifying lap time, and you can't. Because you have this guy, you, you have traffic, you know. You have traffic. So, that's the problem. Dive bone. Ah, oh, that, that was very bad on me. Sorry about that. Should have done it. And uh, yeah, a normal driver would, uh, you know, would have closed the uh, the, uh, the door there, rightfully so. And I would have get him, and that would be all on me. No, 
All right. So don't do that. Now I have another car and um, look at that, I'm, I was all, almost green on the Delta even though I was following you know, the other car. Alright, let's see what we can do. much braking to go away from him. I'm still green on the delta but I'm losing so much time. That was a good exit, let's see if we can get him. That was not very elegant, but what you can do. <laughs> With all that stuff, and I'm still green on the delta. The car is so good. Have to improve that turn over there. I'm three tenths of a second down with a car in front of me that I had to overtake badly. I can go flat out here. No issues at all. <laughs> Almost just one second, 56 lows with that terrible lap. So that, you know, tells you a lot. Not good T1 there. Half a second down just from that. Six tenths of a second down. Let's see here how much we can gain. Terrible braking. One second down. Even with city driving like this. to force myself there a little bit but it was worth it. Let's see if we can do something better here. Not so much. Ah that was bad 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 losing time losing time losing lots of time. Oh come on. Well 55.3 so let's get back to um, to the pits which means that you know with some proper practice proper practice because you have to practice well if you're practicing just to laps you're not doing yourself any well every time you sit on your rig you have to practice and stay careful you know analyze the laps analyze your driving 
try to improve every time. If you don't do that, you know, you have to get out of your comfort zone. If you don't do that, if you don't uh, work hard with pedals and with uh, steering wheel like that and go as close to the limit as you can, always, always controlling your reference points and everything, then uh, you don't do yourself any favors, you know. Again, the most important thing to go fast is the driver. The setup will accommodate your style, will accommodate your needs, but it will give or take, uh, you know, give you half a second or lose you one second if it's, if it's a bad setup, but already with the aggressive, you should be able to get close to half a second or one second of your best possible lap times. So the setup is there to make the car better for you, for your driving style. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you uh, the setups here, but remember, those setups work for me. And if you get the setups and you are driving differently, uh, then the setups, you know, you, you're driving a different car. You're gonna try the, 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 the Ferrari, but practically you are driving a different car, right? So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this setup, so I'm gonna save it. Uh, and we're gonna do something interesting now. So in practice sessions, we have something very interesting, uh, which is the fuel test. Well, first of all, are you guys okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you like what you see? Do you have any specific uh, questions? Uh, let's see. Thank you everybody for, for coming here and uh, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. All right, you guys are talking about front wheel drive. What is this? Front wheel drive? I don't like that. I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right, so um, so what are we going to do now? That's, that's pretty important. Okay, so months ago I mentioned there was another way to increase front aero on the cars aside rake splitter settings. But you were unable to share what it was. Uh, um, increasing front aero. How? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. If you can give me a little bit more context uh, on that. But right, right now, as you say it, I, I don't remember. Anyway, return to guards. Let's let's stick to what we're going to show. I want to show you two more things, guys. So return to guards setup, and what we're going to do is we're going to get again tire set number one, which is you know we arrived at 2.3 and 2.2 uh, depth of uh, of the of the tire tread. Um, yeah, thanks, Captain. Please find it, and then maybe in another stream we can talk about this this uh, question. Um, so uh, again, the same setup, and I'm going to put full fuel, full fuel. So when I'm putting full fuel, again the user interface recontrols all the uh, alignments, the right heads, puts everything as it's supposed to be, and you know you when you click drive now, you're going to have those kind of right heads, even if you have full um, uh, full uh, fuel load, which is how you're going to start your race, okay? Full fuel load or similar to full fuel load and uh, the right head that you tried. Now, what we're going to do, and that only works uh, when you are in practice sessions, uh, it is completely disabled in qualifying sessions, in race sessions, in hot lap sessions, in hot stint sessions, doesn't work. So what we're going to do now is go here in the aerial, fuel load test, fuel load test, and put temporary fuel 
at something low, something like 15 liters. Now what does that is it simulates, it, as you know, if we change the fuel load, the user interface system will auto fix all the alignment, right hits, etc. But if you go with 110 liters full in this car, and then you go to fuel load test and you put a different load, right? Then it doesn't do the auto fix anymore. In fact, you can see that automatically my right head became 59 at the rear and 56 at the front. So the car went up, right? So it doesn't auto fix it anymore. It disables the auto fix and makes you having a car as it's going to be, all right? Uh, when on the race you're gonna go to the end of your stint after one hour say and the fuel load will be very light so your car will you know the right head will rise up so this is very important so what we're gonna do is as I said uh, go back to tire set one so everything is the tires are worn out and back and continue and let's see how the car behaves this is extremely important to prepare your races because otherwise you're gonna have some pretty nasty surprises as you see the car the right head went up so let's see how the car will react a bit of oversteer but let's first heat up the tires Not bad, even if the tires are still cold. Not bad at all. I mean, I was used to the massive grip I had with fresh tires, so I can still use those tires, so... Good. Now it might be placebo, right? But I know it isn't because I know how the physics work. So when when the tires are worn out, it means that you have less rubber, right? Less rubber means that the tire uh, footprint is stiffer. So uh, that means that stiffer means you know it's harsh, uh, it's more harsh. And in this track that is bumpy. I can feel a tiny bit more force feedback vibrations when I go over some bumps because the tires are more, uh, you know, uh, worn out. With the fresh tires, you go over them and you feel something, you know, rubbery. With the uh, worn out tires, you feel something more, uh, how to say, less rubbery, more stiff, more uh, harsh, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I like the job we did. So, uh, tires are now warmed up a little bit. Yeah. And they are warm. And the fuel load is low. Just 10, almost 10 liters. So the car is higher. But the handling of the car is pretty good. It's decent. So that is a very, very good... Uh, indication that the the job we did on the setup was was good you know and uh, yeah very very good indication so if you have big issues in this situation you obviously have to do a tiny bit of uh, um, of uh, compromise in the car uh, for example if the car was very oversteery I would suggest to do just a click at the rear right height, you know, lower it, of course. Let's overtake this guy. No, we can't, he's very fast. Yeah, can't do it. Tires way too warm. 
Yes, I'm, uh, I'm going to share this setup. I will put it uh, here on the comments of the stream once we're, uh, we're done with it. So don't worry about that, guys. I will also put it on the forum somewhere, so you can have this setup if you like it. So yeah, I like it. So as I said, you will have to find a bit of compromise, okay? Uh, you have probably to have the car uh, a little bit under steering when the tires are fresh, so it becomes more neutral and less over steering where the when the tires are warm. Uh, it's up to you. It depends how you feel the car. I feel it very well, so I'm happy with this. But on other cars, for example, the Porsche or the Lambo that we have in front of us, uh, their balance might change because. You know, they're not very balanced cars in terms of weight. The Ferrari is more balanced, more neutral car, so... Um, way too far away. Well, the Lambo Evo wants to spin because uh, you need to do this test uh, on war tires. You said the Lambo Evo wants to spin on war tires. You need to do this test and determine if when the tires are worn and you have low uh, fuel load, if you need to do uh, some uh, compromise in the setup, right? So you have to do some compromise. You have to be, you have to have the car a little bit more under steering when the tires are fresh and then moving forward uh, the tire would become more neutral but if you don't do that you won't be able to to know what's gonna happen you know or uh, I mean you will know it but it will be too late because you will be inside the uh, the race and practically you're gonna have uh, issues because obviously you cannot change the setup during the race The the um, Lambo Evo is a car that needs that needs to needs you to be to not be lazy. You have to work. You have to work a lot, you know, and also um, needs a specific uh, driving style. Uh, with the Ferrari, it has lots of mid uh, corner grip, so you need to get uh, to to make very round uh, um, lines, bring lots of speed. Into the, into the turn. With the Lambo and the Audi, <coughs> sorry, um, you, <coughs> you probably need uh, to, to make the turns uh, in a V pattern, like this, you know, you go into a first apex, a little bit um, outside in the middle of the turn, in the apex, and then go again into a late apex again, you know, you just go in, late braking, rotate the car, get out and you know uh, um, take advantage of of the traction and the, the acceleration because they have very good acceleration anyway so we did that okay we saw that our car is pretty cool um, when you go back it's disabled so that you know so again if i put it you see if i put it 60 you see here 60 millimeters 56 57 it depends uh, also the system tries to uh, accommodate the whole situation and uh, here's another thing you can do and they do it in the real races you can start with a little bit less fuel right obviously as less as you can in order to um, uh, to, to create, to, to, to have enough fuel for the first tint. You go in to the first tint as soon as possible because you have low fuel. Uh, so at 55 minutes, you, you know you have 10 minutes of going in, right? You have 55 to 65, something like that. Uh, correcting me if I'm wrong, but out of memory I remember that you have 10 minutes of time uh, to go in for your pit stop. 
So you go in at 55 minutes. At, as soon as you know the uh, pit lane is open for you, the pit lane, the pit stop window, and you carry low fuel, okay? And then you fill the car up because if you fill the car up like this, the car probably will go lower, even lower than the limits. And you say, "Bow, oh, oh, wait a minute, that's you know that's illegal." Uh, not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. Here's what happened. Uh, the rules say that the car must be um, controlled for right here before the race, okay, and you have to be into the limits, and after the race. What do you do during the race, it's up to you. Okay, so if you can do something, well done. Obviously, we're talking about half millimeter or one millimeter, but if that gives you some kind of performance, good for you. Uh, obviously, you say, well, I will, if I'm lower during the race, then I will end the race and I will be lower. No, because you will end the race with low fuel and the car will rise up again and it will be over the limit. We're really talking about half millimeter or maybe one millimeter at max. But, you know, sometimes uh, teams might think it's worth it and you might think too. It's up to you. All right, so uh, I think it's pretty clear. Let's see a little bit of um, questions. Uh, Yes, of course, the sim calculates aero uh, during aero effect of body roll, so that's why we try also to make the car not roll too much with uh, bump stops and with uh, front anti roll bar. It's always very stiff. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, yes, the Audi has a tiny bit longer wheelbase, but we're talking about like something like uh, 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, something like that. It's really, really tiny, tiny. It, it, I mean, in those cars, everything is important. You saw that. So, if, if it suits better your driving style, go for it. That's the, the whole beauty of uh, Assetto Corsa. On every competition, on every circuit, you have at least five cars, at least five cars that can win on every circuit. So those cars might change, some cars might be able to win everywhere, like, I don't know, the Mercedes, uh, the Audi maybe, uh, uh, some cars might be able to win on some circuits, like the Aston Martin, the old Aston Martin can win at Paul Ricard maybe, because it has tons of acceleration and top speed. Uh, but, you know, you have at least five cars that potentially they can win. So, exactly, uh, Voodoo Child, you, if you screw up, you get disqualified like the 4th It happens. Mm. Yes, that's what I told you, uh, James, Andrew. Uh, if you start with a little bit lower fuel and you fill it up during the first pit stop, then you can do the race with lower right here for at least until the car has lots of you know fuel you can do it I mean the rules are clear it's not illegal it goes a little bit against the idea of the regulation but the rules are, really, are, are very clear about this we you know measure the car at the start of the race we measure the car at the end of the race what you do in between the race it's up to you what represent the uh, three lines as I said uh, it's the bump stop I've talked about it earlier, um, the, the green uh, line is the down bump stop, practically you don't care about it, it's fixed, it is as it is. Uh, the yellow line is the movement of the suspension, in fact if I change something, the car bounces and you can see the suspension going up and down, up and down, up and down until it stabilizes. Uh, before someone says something about it, um, it, it goes like that because in the setup we try to lower the dampers at a very low level so that the car can change right height relatively fast because otherwise with the dampers so stiff as they are uh, it wouldn't change uh, the right height properly and you could be very fast at changing things save and save something that it was asymmetrical because in the background it would try to make the car symmetrical but it didn't have the time so uh, in, in the user interface we lower the physics behind it, it still work but we lower the dumping to low values, so that's why when I change something, you see this 
boink, 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 boink in the yellow line. And the red line is the bump stop. So you have a tiny bit gap of the suspension until uh, it goes to touch the bump stop. Uh, as I said before, uh, you want the front, especially the front, to practically touching the bump stops all the time. The bump stops are not a fixed value, but they are a hyper hyperbolic uh, curve. It goes like, like that, right? So you touch them, they are very soft. The more you compress them, the more stiff they get. Stiff, 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 until you know, they control uh, the, uh, the pitch. Um, The rear bump stop, you, usually you don't want the rear of the car touching the bump stops. Because of the stiffness, uh, uh, it can give you uh, traction issues, big traction issues, especially over the, the, the bumps. So usually all the, um, all, all the, uh, the teams do not really let the suspension to touch you know, uh, the rear bump stops. Some some um, teams on some cars and on some circuits do use rear bump stops. It takes a lot of fine tuning. Uh, for example, I know they told me that if you want to know about bump stops, go ask the uh, engineer of Rinaldi. They call him the god of bump stops. Uh, that's what they told him. So, you know, it, it depends on the engineer. But generally, you don't want bump stops at the rear because when you go over a bump, they compress a lot, they make the rear very stiff, and then you lose traction. No, no, uh, in uh, Niels, in ACC, they are rising rate, uh, uh, it's hyperbolic, uh, we can even change it from car to car with different, um, I would say, gammas for, for, the, uh, uh, for the curve. Uh, and what you see in the rate is the, is, the, is the force because obviously we cannot because it is you know hyperbolic and rises stiffness we cannot give you the exact rate because it changes as you go as you compress the bump stop uh, we give you the force at 10 millimeters so 1000 new 1100 uh, newtons here at 10 millimeters of bump compression this is the the reference point into this setup we're doing um, Yes, it's front of the road is the same. Obviously, the effects that you have at the rear, you have at the front. M6 likes some rear bump stop. That's true. That is why that car is problematic. Uh, it, the rear uh, suspension of the M6 moves a little bit too much. Uh, and uh, um, the uh, diffuser is quite big, which also means automatically it's also quite sensitive in pitch. And so you have a car that, when it moves and goes up and down, especially at the rear, it becomes unstable. And you can see that if you go and check the 2018 uh, Brands Hatz race. Uh, Brands Hatz is a pretty bumpy car, a uh, bumpy circuit, sorry. And you could see how the cars were quite bumpy. Um, the BMW was forced to, to use some bump stops at the rear because otherwise it would go too low and it would stall the, the rear diffuser uh, and uh, the car was very undrivable it was lacking um, traction I think at some point even the commentators were talking about that that the drivers told them that the car was unstable uh, and was lacking traction it was a little bit of difficult and a handful to, to drive so go check GT World YouTube channel check the uh, Brands Hatch 2018 race You'll see the um, BMW having issues dealing with the bumps of, of the circuit. Uh, it's, um, it's a good car, it's not uh, a bad car, but it is difficult to find the operation we do. What operation we do means, we will talk about that in a minute. So, uh, yes, it might not be eight at Spa. Spa is a very smooth track. So if you manage to make the car work, it is fast, you know. Uh, obviously, it is a 24 hours, so everything can happen. But if you if your car is not good enough, even even with luck, you won't be up front.
I don't know yet on the AMG 2020. I don't know yet. Uh, I don't know yet. The car was already very, uh, uh, very competitive e even in 2019. Uh, Marcello's car, Raffaello, had tons and tons of bad luck. I mean, those guys really had all the bad luck possible in 2019, last year. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that the car would be up there in the front. Uh, but, you know, obviously, the, uh, the other cars, the new cars, are getting faster, so they want to, to be faster too. I know they get tons and tons of BOP, especially in weight, because they cannot really um, restrict the engine a lot, because, I mean, they keep restricting the engine, but it's still 6.9 liters. What can you do? It's, you know, it's mind-blowing, the amount of torque it can, it can deliver. So they keep adding weight, but, you know... All right, so no more specific uh, questions. So let's do something interesting here. So let's get out of, actually, let's save the, the setup again. Let's call it Steam stream number two, this, because it's our final setup. Save that. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I should go here and, uh, oops, sorry, and put this to 60 as it was default and tire set one so that you know guys that you're gonna have the uh, the front uh, tires as you see you we didn't touch the the brake pads don't do it I mean you don't have to do that uh, save and uh, save again yes override and that's it so this I'm gonna post it uh, in a link in the comments uh, after the stream and I'm gonna pin it on top so that if you guys come tomorrow uh, after the stream and you will find it as a first comment and I will probably also put it on the forum so that you can download it from there too all right so what I, what I wanted to show you we talked a tiny bit about um, operation window of the cars so let's get out of here quit Uh, the BOP of the Porsche Evo, obviously we check the, uh, the performance of the car, it, it, it didn't run on, uh, on those uh, sprint races uh, at uh, Misano, I'm talking to Sestinomio, Se Sesti sorry, Sestinomio, um, so he asked if how the Porsche Evo got the BOP on uh, tracks like Misano, Hungaroring, Zolder, when it didn't actually participate in 2019. Uh, sometimes we get the BOP even if he didn't participate, uh, because they do obviously the, uh, uh, the testing and they know what to do. Sometimes we are going to check the performance and we have all the BOP of, of all the other circuits, uh, so we're going there and we know pretty much how much you know, weight and how much uh, restriction on the engine we have to add. It's pretty straightforward. As I said other times, the BOP is not arbitrary. You have some um, equations uh, that gives you the BOP and on top of them you can go a little bit up and down depending on the situation. Uh, so, you know, we know more or less where it should be. There is a bit of um, uh, fine-tuning that we can do if needed, uh, but pretty much that's it. So, uh, let's go to hot stint here. Again, same car, same truck. And I want to show you this. Yes, uh, we're going to do... This session is about consistency. Try to be fast, but don't push it too much over the limit. Okay, thank you, Gergo. Uh, so, uh, we're going to... Uh, at least my, my intention is to do plenty of streams like that for different cars, for different circuits. So, maybe in the next uh, streams... Uh, we're gonna start. Also, I'm gonna start also making polls so that you guys can vote which car track combination you want to do. Um, um, and uh, uh, what I wanted to say is, b before starting to you know doing all that cars, we need to first understand some basic of the setup. So when we're trying a new car, then I can tell you you know go into that uh, stream, that video, check check out what we did there. Obviously, we will repeat the whole uh, process, but, you know, we, we have a better idea. 
Right, so um, what I wanted to show you here. So let's let's load our setup. Load this. Uh, this is how we are. This is our mechanical grip, okay? And this is our aero grip. Uh, now, a sim racer contacts me, uh, Max Altons. Uh, you might heard of him. So he contacts me uh, and he tells me, you know, Aris, um, I've made a setup for the uh, Ferrari uh, and the car actually spins like it has no grip at the rear of, of the tires. Uh, and whatever I do with the setup trying to, you know, improve the situation, it keeps doing it. I can't get out of it. Uh, so I don't know if, that's, if it's my problem or if it's a problem with the car. Maybe you want to have a double check and see if, you know, there is some typo and if you get some values uh, in, in some range, then the car starts behaving badly. So I say, okay, yeah, send me the setup. I can have a look at it and see how it goes. So he sent me his setup and it was this one. So this was his setup. So if we see here, there's nothing really strange, okay. Uh, it's a soft setup like this. We saw before that the setup, the soft setup, makes the car a little bit, you know, slow and a little bit sluggish, but easy to control, right? And um, the aero, no big deal, a little bit too much rake, probably, 59, a little bit too much rake. Dumpers, a little bit too low bump. So I see a trend here, something strange happening, way too much preload differential. So he is telling me that he's going to the turn and at the middle of the turn the car spins on him. So he has big uh, oversteer problems. So if you think about it, he has extremely low rear anti-roll bar, extremely stiff front anti-roll bar. Um, he has lots of preload pre differential, very soft bump and very stiff rebound at the front. All right, so this makes me understand that he's trying to uh, find rear mechanical grip to correct the car from, you know, sliding. Because this is all things uh, that, you know, um, you, you try to do when it's the classical rules that you read on the books. You know, the book says you need more mechanical grip on one of the axes than make that axis uh, of the car as soft as possible and make the other one as rigid as possible. This is what you find in the old books of car handling and setup. So you can see here he's trying to do that, all right? Uh, tires, similar situation, you know, you see here very low uh, tire pressures at the rear, higher at the front. Um, that's the situation. The setup doesn't seem, you know, out of, of proportion. So let's try the setup and see what's going on. So, try the setup. Let's go. And see. Alright, let's go. Didn't have any issues on the first turn, but let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, it has some oversteer, old power also. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> that, that was <laughs> unexpected. Oh, you see, when I'm braking or releasing, how the car instantly goes in. Do you remember the whole, the whole discussion before, uh, at the early uh, hours of the stream, when I told you that when you go into the apex and you let go of the car, you want some reactions, but the reaction has to be subtle and you have to be able to control them in time. And clearly this car rotates way too much. Now, on slow turns, 
It's not that bad. But, oh! <laughs> on fast turns, we have issues. We have big issues. Yeah. You see how much time I'm losing trying to, to control the car here? Which means I... all that is, you know, losing time. You don't uh, have the car where you want it to be, you have to control it, and then you're late on the accelerator and so on. And this is make you lose time. Oh, oh, that was very bad. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, you, you see, at high speeds, big big situations so at, at very slow speeds it's not that bad it has some issues but it's not that bad you see the turning is ex oh, extremely oversteering if I'm not careful of what I'm doing in the turning that oof this is so now that the the tires are getting into into pressure and heat i'm having even more problems so let me remind you as we said at the start of uh, of the stream that a soft setup also makes the car move more in pitch uh, and that means uh, that the aero balance moves forward or backwards way too much. Okay, and this creates instability and not much of uh, precision. Oof. See, oh, you see how if I'm not on the on the accelerator, oh, the car really wants to rotate on on fast turns oh you see that you see here i it might seem that it was understeer but it wasn't understeer it was me having fear to put the car in the turn so i ended up wide so you have also to be careful to understand what you're doing and how you're driving the car Oof, I just I just can't put the car inside. Okay, that, enough enough of this. It's undrivable. So the so the guy was you know properly complaining and he was right about it. So let's go back and see. So um, right. here's the situation. Those cars have the so-called windows of operation. Okay, I've. I've uh, um, written about that in the forums. Uh, I will tell you what I mean here. Uh, it's not easy. I haven't prepared, unfortunately, and I'm not in the other uh, XSplit, uh, so I cannot, we know, switch um, windows to, to show you a diagram. So I'll, I don't know if I should try to show you here or do something different. Anyway, let's let's try to, to do this. I don't know if you guys can. So. Let's say that all um, the uh, all all the values that you have in the setup, okay, you are in something like here. You have tons of values, okay, and you can go through all the ranges from minimum to maximum in all the values. Which means that the whole car has a range of values that starts from from here and ends here. Okay, this is all the values that and combinations that you can put on the car. So, normally, until now, um, in, our, in our older sims, uh, talking at least about at least about Kunos, I don't know the others, I guess so, I mean, at least for older ones, uh, you go soft, you have the car that has more grip, uh, it's easier to handle, but is less precise, it's uh, less uh, fast uh, on changing situations and stuff like that. Uh, in, you, you go stiff, you have the car that is very dirty, very, very fast, changing direction, very precise, but you have less grip, it's uh, harder to, to work, etc. So you have to find a compromise somewhere in here. Um, but in reality, 
real cars and in a set of competition, it doesn't work like that. You have um, windows of operation, which means you have all these reins, and in a particular circuit and driving style, but more specifically circuit, the car might work from here, okay, to here. So this part, here it works, okay. And then it might work from here to here again, okay. So something like that, and it works here. So the car works here, and it works here. Outside of those two windows, okay, you're going to have unpredictable results. So, for example, you might say, okay, the car here is oversteery, and I'm very close to the operation window that I might not know, but I'm very close to the operation window. So, the car is oversteery, I will make the rear end softer. So, you go out of the operation window, a you'd expect normally that the car will gain grip as you go softer, and you'll have more traction at the rear. But you try the car, and strangely enough, instead of having more grip and more traction, the car starts to react unpredictably. It starts to become even more oversteery. And this happens because you stepped out from the operation, uh, operation window. Okay? It's not, obviously, it's not like a click. It's not like, you know, uh, works, 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 doesn't work anymore. No, it's more gradual, but it does happen. And this is why we have many people that trying, you know, coming from older sims, coming into a Seto Corsa Competizione, they try the usual old logic of setups, and they're like, oh, I have oversteer here. I will soften, you know, the rear end. Let's go here. And instantly the car becomes even more oversteery. That means that you sl slipped out, you stepped out of the operation window. Now, you might keep going and arrive here, that is another operation window, and then it works again. So, oh, what happened? Oh, this simulator, you see, doesn't work anymore, it's completely bugged. No, it does so because all the, simula all, all the stuff that simulates inside, and especially the advanced aerodynamics, create, without us creating, you know, in, in a script, it's, it is created automatically, uh, uh, it creates operation windows. It might be one and two, it might be just one, it might be one, two, three, who knows? We don't even know, you have to try and see. But the, the, the rule here is that if you are doing something logical, you know, so you have, let's say, oversteer and say, okay, I'll make the front end even more stiff, you know, and it works, it means that you are still inside the operation window. If it starts giving you the opposite of what you're expecting, then you're probably going outside of the operation window. So either you do a big jump and go into another operation window, or you stay there, you go back a little bit and start playing with the other axis, the opposite. Start to try different things, you know? Uh, so remember this. Uh, if you have something that works, and at some point you keep going, you keep going with the setup, and you're getting the opposite results of what you're, you're expecting, means that you are slowly creeping out of the operation window. All right? And obviously I can tell you that the safe setup and the aggressive setup are in operation windows. So if you're starting moving outside the aggressive setup uh, and it works, all fine, you're still inside the operation window. If at some point it gives you, again, different results, the opposite of what you, ex uh, you expect, then it means that you are stepping outside the operation window. Go a step backwards in the value that you were changing and go somewhere else in the setup. So let's say you were changing something at the front, it gives you the exact opposite, one click behind again, go at the rear and do something there to balance the car again. All right? So is that clear now? Uh, let's see. Uh, All right. Okay, so uh, I don't see any specific uh, questions about this. Hopefully you guys understood that. Let's see what's the problem with this setup. So the problem here is that instead of going one click at a time, he did tons of click at a time. And he stepped out completely of the operation window and 
lost any logic. I mean, his logic and what you will find also in books is that, okay, you have oversteer, make the rear softer, 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 all the way, and make the front stiffer, 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 and lock the preload differential so that, you know, it locks and doesn't make the car rotate, it gives you more stability. But the problem is that he stepped out of the operation window, basically the aero operation window of the car, and so any, everything he was doing, he, it makes the car even wider, even more oversteery. Everything was going on the opposite, even if, you know, logic and theory would suggest, suggest that this is what he should do. Um, so, what was his problem? Here's the problem, the main problem was here. He probably at some point he thought that, okay, I have too much understeer, so let's make the front softer, so let's make the bump stop range uh, higher so that the suspension moves more and doesn't go on the bump stop at the front. So as you can see, he put the bump stop range out four, right? That was it. Instead of doing one click, he made four clicks in a very specific uh, value, which are the bump stop. All, all the stuff that is here uh, in, in the uh, mechanical grip, except the anti-roll bars, but the wheel rates and the bump stop rates and the bump stop rates, one click at a time, maybe two at some occasion, but one click at a time. He made four clicks, completely lost the operation window. What is happening here is that uh, the car, especially at high speeds, goes into the turn. When I lift or even, though, even uh, breaking a little bit, it will dive way too much, all right? The front end will go way too low into the um, uh, into to, to the terrain uh, it will create much downforce at the front uh, it will uh, stop the flow to the diffuser so the diffuser will get less uh, flow of air uh, and will start producing less downforce so the whole aerodynamic balance will move to the front exactly at the point where you are in need of more stability and instead of stability you have tons of grip at the front uh, less grip at the rear and the car starts to rotate as badly as we as we saw so solution let's go back to zero here and i won't touch anything else anything else i will just go back to zero here uh, uh, and see and see what happens okay just that so uh, i will try this to put the car to control the pitch of the car and controlling the pitch of the car, it means that I'm going to try to bring the aero platform back to the operation window. Okay, so that the platform goes in pitch but stays into certain uh, rake and certain degrees that the whole aero platform still works. It doesn't move too much back and forth. So I just change this and let's, let's drive it. Uh, yes, Nails, we got aero maps for the manufacturers, and that was, you know, quite quite a help. Um, it sometimes sometimes they don't give you the exact values. Uh, they give you the aero map uh, in percentage, so they tell you, okay, this is the rake. You have top percentage uh, at uh, at a reference points, zero percentage, and then. The rake changes and they say you, okay, uh, they tell you, okay, 1% more at the front, 2% more at the front, 3% more at the front, uh, and they give you like this, and uh, other times, uh, sorry, and when they do that also, we also ask them at least uh, a telemetry so that we understand a little bit of what's going on, and we, they also give us some reference values uh, at some speed with some aero at you know, at balance. So, okay, we know that at that speed, with that uh, rake, the car produces this kind of values, and uh, uh, then the rake changes, and we have some percentages back and forth. Uh, so yeah, we, we got that, and that's why we don't show that anywhere, uh, because obviously, you know, we have to make it a bit difficult. Uh, we don't want to show people. Uh, those data because as you can understand manufacturers uh, give those data to the teams that they pay around five six uh, eight hundred thousand euros per car so yeah
Oh, oh, still, still missed the car. But that was probably my error because I arrived at at the um, at, at the braking zone way too hot, braked way too too late. Uh, obviously, we just did one change. It doesn't mean we corrected completely the car. Um, so, but I want to see if it is at least a little bit better. And as you can see, at least I can go on on costing, and the car doesn't really rotate as much. It does rotate a little bit uh, if I trail brake. So probably we have, yeah, we have way too low brake balance. It's at 51.2. It's way, way too low. This is another problem, you know, in in Assetto Corsa 1, you would enter the turn, making the rear end sliding like that a little bit, you know. You would let it slide smoothly. Very fun to drive, very entertaining, but it's not realistic because if you see the cars in uh, in real life they don't slide uh, they don't slide at all they stay very good very stable and if you try to do this kind of setup and this kind of driving in uh, in a set of course competizione it doesn't pay at all the car becomes very nervous and it doesn't really slide smoothly it starts to slide grip slide grip and this is awful it doesn't give you a nice feeling and uh, it doesn't even go fast so people there are people i know some sim races that they're not used to that they try to say oh that's not correct well it is you have to change your habits uh, so anyway we are here and the car is still bad but it's better than before so let's move the uh, brake balance to the front i'm at four, 44 i would go 55 and see what happens so I just changed two things. I brought back the bump stop range at zero. And I've changed the brake balance now at 55 from 51 that it was really, really very, very low. Oh, in, in fast corners I still have issues. Like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. And uh, let's just, as I told you, now we have a car that's way too much, you know. So let's go back two clicks at the rear. Oh, look, we have arrived at what I was using before. And the car is a little bit soft, so let's do two clicks, two clicks, two clicks. That's all. Okay. Back again. Yeah, I forgot to raise the brake balance of the setup, so let's go back to 55 again. And let's see what we have here. Yeah, it's much more stable, you see? Much more stable. So instantly the car begins... Oh, look, look, look at that. So we just did two clicks on the rear right head, uh, two clicks at the, uh, at the springs, so wheel rate, and the car instantly you know, changed like that, transformed completely. What does that mean? It means that we stepped in the operational window. That's, wow, look at that. Completely stable. I mean, like, the, the difference is massive here, you know? So, uh, so th this is the problem. I, we didn't completely change his setup, no. Uh, there's tons of stuff you can do in that set setup to make it better. Uh, but the important thing is that the moment that you put the car in the operation window, then you can start to have, you know, you can start driving again 
and not correcting, not fighting the car. If you drive the car and you're able to drive the car without fighting it, then you can start thinking how to improve the setup and your driving style. If you go out of the operation window of the car, asking from the car to do things that it cannot do, then it won't, it won't work. In competizione, it simply won't work. It's not like, you know, you can uh, trick the, the physics and make the car drifty so that you can go into, you know, look at how the car is stable, it's amazing. And, uh, you, but you cannot do that, you cannot do that, you know, you're not going to do this. I mean, yes, you can do it, but you're so slow, it doesn't make sense. You cannot drift and then get straight on the, uh, on the exit and go fast. So, this is the case study I wanted to show you, uh, which I think explains very, very well what the operation window, you know, of the cars are. Some cars have very narrow operation window, for example, Audi, um, uh, Lamborghini, very, very narrow operation window. Uh, some cars have a wider operation window, like, for example, the Lexus or, <coughs> sorry again, uh, or the, uh, the Bentley. Bentley uh, has a very wide operation window, so you can go hard on the, um, on the setup changes and the car still maintains uh, its, char its character. Uh, some cars have strange operation windows, like the Porsche. The Porsche is very tricky to drive because at every circuit they need a completely different setup. And this is a problem actually of the real car. Uh, changes a little bit the, uh, temper the ambient temperature, changes a little bit the circuit, and you know they have to change completely the setup, especially on the old uh, Porsche. The Porsche Evo is a little bit better, but still has issues. So each car has its own characteristics, and you have to respect them. You have to find the operation window. Uh, the uh, preset setups are a good indication where to stay and not go too far off. Uh, you can go too far off, but you have to find a different operation window, which might be way too far away. Um, okay, so this is the situation. Um, so, uh, I, yes, we, we talk about that with, uh, with the sim racer. He was very happy. He understood that. I thank him that he let him, that he let me, you know, uh, showcase that, that situation because I think it's very clear, very important to showcase this. And so thanks again to, um, to Albert McSaltons for sharing his setup and, uh, the whole situation. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. So let, let's see if you guys have any questions. So, I really love to see the whole contract for ACC. Oh, actually, uh, no, wait, uh, there's another one. Aris, what do you think about GT3 cars in the end? Do you think that this BOP is an amazing thing, a bit counterproductive too? Some races like to watch from low one. Um, Oh God, this is such a tricky question because if we start talking about that, we we need you know an hour of of discussing and analyzing and um, I I like the GT3 cars because I like you know their design. Um, I think they have become too grippy, which you know uh, also very sensitive aerodynamically, uh, which makes the cars driving more or less the same way. Uh, the less aerodynamic grip you have, the more creative you can be with your lines and with the balance of the car. You can slide a little bit. You can see this in vintage cars. And the more creative you can be, the more the the viewer can understand the different driving styles of uh, of a car. It's like MotoGP. I don't know if you guys uh, watch MotoGP or Superbike. Uh, bikes have no aerodynamics. Uh, I mean, you could take away all the colors and sponsors from the bikes and you could still understand which driver drives which bike because every one of them has a different style and does different things with the bike because all they have to depend on is the, the mechanical grip. Uh, this is no more the case in modern uh, higher dynamic racing. Uh, you can already see this happening in GT3. Uh, even more in GT2, GTE, 
uh, even more in way more in LMP uh, racing and obviously Formula One everybody is behind the other in a small train in a little train and do exactly the same things because otherwise the car do not work uh, do not work so you have to do that so yes I think they are going a little bit too far in aerodynamics but um, I find them surprisingly nice to, to drive and go close to the limit. Uh, I wasn't expecting, to, expecting them to be that fun uh, once you find out how to drive them close to the limit, that, because that's the key. If you overdrive them or if you're trying to do things that the car don't want to do, then the driving is bad, it's, it's awful, it's understeers or oversteers instantly, it's sliding, not sliding, you don't understand, it's, everything is flat and everything is like, oh, what is that, the game is not good. But it's not like that, you really need to understand, try to go close to the limit, it asks from you to become a better driver, and to understand how to do it, and if you stay there, then a whole new world starts to, to you know, unfold uh, in front of you. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, okay, other thing. Uh, Niels asks, it sold, by the way, spent $400,000 on a GT3 car. Fondeman Fat asks for Aeromap and all you hear is beep, beep, beep and they hang up. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, it is as it is. Well, you know, uh, you can get out some some data from the telemetry, even with ours, if you are good enough and do some mathematical uh, channels on Motec, you can, you know, start to understand something and have an idea at least. But yeah, not, not all cars gives you precise aeromaps, so it's, you know, client racing, that, that's what it is. Other things, would you not raise real bump stop? Yeah, probably. Uh, do you ever use the CC rating to determine if the setup works better or needs improving? No, not really, not really. I'm not that, I don't... This is for me, but, but this is personal, this is completely personal, right? For me this is like cheating, you know, you don't have a CC ra uh, rating in real life. Uh, why we put it in? Because you guys need, not, not you, many users need some help to understand, okay, I'm overdriving, I'm doing stuff wrong, so I have to, you know, learn to do it better. And I know many people that learn to drive with CC rating, which is fine, it's great. But once you arrive at the point that you understand what you're doing, forget that, drive properly, properly uh, learn to do the setups. This is the nice thing about the simulators. It's not just driving and having fun. It's you learn about the cars, you learn about the circuits, you learn the theories, uh, you go to watch a real race and you know more than the average guy that sits next to you or even the commentator that just, you know, tells things that uh, has learned who knows how but doesn't have, really understand them. All you sim racers are far, far better understanding real racing than any other guy that doesn't do sim racing. I think this is very important and it's not really well known or not really well understood in our community. We should be proud about that. We know much much more stuff about racing. Uh, has the aero increased much since uh, say 2010? which is typical lift drag ratio. Um, typical lift is about three. Typical lift is about three. I don't remember if it's, uh, this is more than, you know, uh, uh, 2010. Uh, usually, I think you know that, Niels, what happens is um, the absolute numbers rise, 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 always from, you know, old years to modern years. The absolute number, so the absolute lift rise to 3, 3.2, 3.3, and then the cars become too fast. And so uh, what happens? The regulation, the rules come in and they say, okay, we limit that now so that you go back to 2.8, 2.7, let's say. Uh, and so they start again working in the limitations. And the key here is not only they manage to go up again, which is great, but they also manage to widen the range of operation, you know. 
So um, there is a great uh, book. Um, give me a second, guys. Give me a second, and um, I will show you something that is pretty nice. Just, just a second. I'll take a book. Let's see if I can find this. So this is a very nice book. I think it's here. Oh yeah. Uh, that's a very nice book. I think the, the guys that they are interested about, you know, physics. Okay, back again. So this is a very nice book. It's a Formula One Technology by Peter Wright. Very, very nice book. And it has lots of things about uh, aerodynamics to, to understand. It's uh, an easy read. Doesn't I mean, it has some equations, but not much. And uh, it's, uh, it's cool on some stuff because it makes you understand. So, here's a very nice graph. Uh, can you see it, guys? Uh, let me, let me uh, make the webcam window a bit, um, a bit bigger. I think I can do that. So, let me go here, and um, all right, and bigger, yeah, like that, all right. Okay, so, here it is, oops. Here it is. So uh, this this is the graph I want to show you. Okay, this is the graph. So what that graph shows the absolute. Sorry, I have to do it. You know, in the opposite. So the absolute numbers of downforce are almost the same uh, from from uh, the uh, Mercedes. No, from the Lotus uh, seven, 72. No, actually, this is the G-Force. This is the G-Force. No, sorry, wrong diagram. Let me find the other one. Where was it? I'm not sure if I can find it here. But let's see. If not, we will. I will show you in there because you still you can you can understand it. Um, no, I can't find it. Anyway, yeah, let, let's do it here. Uh, you can still understand. So, okay, back. Ah, frustrating. All right, so let's get this out from here and let's show it like that all right here we are so these are the g-forces all right which means you know more g-forces means more downforce all right and here's the trick situation so you see the g-forces between older some older cars not very old but some older cars and some uh, modern cars it's not that big of, of a difference but as you go down on slower speeds you see how the older car the inside one becomes thinner and thinner creates less you know um, less downforce uh, while the modern car goes down more vertically uh, as you go down there is even more difference than in the absolute value so down here in the mid-turns, you have more difference. What does that mean? It means that the car uh, is easier and faster to drive for the driver, even at low to medium speeds. You know? So the absolute values are not that different, but how you arrive on those values is different. So the, the older car is somewhere here and goes up like this. So when when you are at very high speed you have tons of grip but when you are at very low speed you have much le much less grip so you have issues you know the modern car is more or less the same because of regulation the regulations limit the absolute numbers so you cannot have too high numbers at the absolute uh, numbers of grip but as you go down one goes like this and the other stays similar so at mid-speed uh, um, uh, uh, turns, 
you have more grip, you can take advantage of that grip, you can be faster and in an easier way. So motor cars let you stay on the limit, uh, both higher limit and more easily and more often. So you have to stay on the limit for more time. Uh, this is even more important, this kind of graphs, if you look at the operation windows. So the operation windows that we talked before on older cars are very, very narrow, very, very narrow. I mean, old GT1 cars had lots of pit sensitivity. Car Do you remember uh, the Mercedes uh, GT1 car, uh, SL? R, I don't remember, the one that Mark Weber took flight at uh, the um, Le Mans, you know, he went up and took flight and spun around, was pretty, pretty uh, uh, amazing. So those cars were extremely pit sensitive, extremely pit sensitive. Uh, so the setups had to be extremely stiff, extremely stiff, so that the car would remain, you know, at the same rake and won't move back and forth their, their uh, aero balance. So they were very hard to drive at low speeds uh, and also very skittish ones. You would, I don't know, jump over a curb, slide a tiny bit. They were very, very uh, skittish. Uh, so the, um, the uh, regulations limited those cars. We now have the GTE cars that are practically faster Okay, but they're also much, much easier to drive because their, their uh, maximum values might be even less uh, of downforce at some speed than those cars, but globally they have wider operation widows, they are easier to drive, they are faster in low speeds, all that stuff. So this is how uh, regulations limit modern cars, but uh, uh, engineering makes the cars faster anyway. Um, all right, so anything else? Uh, okay, thank you guys for the... Because I remember to subscribe and all the stuff, you know, typical YouTube stuff. Um, yeah, that. Uh, boo -boo 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 -boo. Aries, would you say that aero is more important in ACC than mechanical grip? Yes, yes, absolutely. If you don't have the car into your uh, operation window, aero operation window, then it won't work. Uh, there was a question in one of my first streams. One guy said, oh, but at low speeds, under 100 kilometers per hour, 120 kilometers per hour, uh, downforce is not, is not enough, it's, it's not important. It is very important. It's true that the value uh, of of the downforce is low. You have something like 40, 60 kilos around the car, moving around from the back, 80 kilos, which one would say, you know, the car is 140, uh, sorry, 1,040, 100 kilos. Uh, so 80 kilos moving is not a big deal. Yes, but there is a difference. And as we said, there's a tiny difference, and the tiny differences make a big difference in the end. <clears throat> With those cars, obviously, you are racing, and you are racing at the limit, which means that if you have done everything else properly, when you are on the turn, you are at the exact limit of the both front and rear tires. So you are at the exact limit. You have maybe a tiny bit of understeer or a tiny bit of oversteer, but you are there. You are the so when you are at the limit, of sliding away, if you put additional 60 kilos at the front or at the rear that they're moving, then yes, you have a problem. It's not a big problem, but you have a problem that the car starts to slide at the front or at the rear, depending where the downforce shifted. Why? Because you are exactly at the limit, so both tires are at the exact limit. You go over that limit, you know, because you took off the load or you gave more limited, uh, with more load, the uh, downforce load on the tires, and so you shift the whole balance. That's the, the thing that we talked before. You need balance from your car. So when you are at the limit, you play with the pedal and you see how the balance is. If the car gets too much unbalanced, you have to do something 
either with the mechanical clear or uh, grip or even more, imp more importantly with the aerodynamic grip okay because you don't need to have too much of a uh, aerodynamic shift uh, aerodynamic balance shift front and rear because this is what when you are at the limit will cause the car go way too much in or way too much out depending on what is happening so you need a balance of the car that when you are just at the limit and you play with the pedal you get obviously what you need so you release the pedal the nose goes a bit in you give acceleration the car stabilizes maybe you get a tiny bit more un understeer but if you keep pushing then it slowly goes into power oversteer all of that needs to be subtle up to the point that doesn't give you um, you know uh, doesn't make you worry uh, doesn't annoy you and you have the time to control it that's why each setup is different uh, a, a guy that is faster than me more precise can handle a car that is faster on you know changing uh, this kind of, of balance because you know he can deal with it and he can be more precise to deal with it without problems uh, guy like me that needs a little bit more time to understand what the car is doing uh, then it need it means that uh, I need the car to be a little bit more uh, to have more subtle movements when I play with the pedals right on the limit a guy that is slower than me for whatever reason it needs of the car to be even more subtle uh, in, in its limits so this is this is what's happening okay so yes the, the arrow is extremely 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 important yes we simulate uh, resistance to yo uh, both for the whole body and for the rear vertical fins so each fin has its uh, aero uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, fin area uh, and obviously we simulate both resistance and on some occasions um, downforce uh, lift or, 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 or downforce uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a car like uh, the Astromatic V8 a bit more agile raise the rear raise the, the rear end uh, lower a tiny bit the front uh, bump stop rate but a tiny bit one click at a time okay here's a, a couple of things that you can do all right all right so race car engineer magazine very very good magazine very nice very very good yes uh, in fact uh, the LMP cars and some Formula One cars that they have those big you know vertical fins uh, they act uh, like you know uh, sail fins in the end and if you are going in a certain yo not much four degrees five degrees they are actually not only stabilizing the car but they generate downforce they generate downforce. This is something that I found out when I was doing the LMP cars at Assetto Corsa 1 and we are, were simulating that, although we had other simplifications, but we were simulating that and it still simulates here. Uh, so yes, a big vertical fin can generate downforce. Uh, this is also something that they are doing with the uh, diffusers. You see that modern diffusers have many vertical fins that you know divide the diffuser in areas. They do that to make uh, the diffuser less sensitive in yo. So when the car rotates and drifts a little bit, instead of losing downforce, it maintains it. Some cars maybe even gain a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but at least it maintains it. Except if you're going, you know, completely sideways from an angle, and over that, then you start losing tons of downforce. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 exactly. That. The field grid go, they create south force. They create they create south force, yes, with a, a few degrees yo, but they also create downforce. Not not only side force, you know, because of the aero resistance of something that goes like that on the wind, but they also create downforce. Your problem with the GTR is the oversteer on low medium turns. The GTR has some turbo lag. So you go on the accelerator, nothing happens, you're happy, and at some point the turbo kicks in and whoop, you know, 
So you have to accommodate on that. Uh, even worse than the GTR is the um, Honda. The Honda NSX has NSX has pr practically the smallest engine of all the cars. It is like uh, 3.2, something like that, liters. Uh, so it needs to have big turbos to generate power because the um, road car generates normal less power from from the engine, but it also has the electric. Uh, motors to you know have maximum power. The racing car doesn't have the electric motor because the regulation doesn't permit it and so they have to have big turbos to give more boost uh, and generate the power that they need means that you know they have more turbo lag so you go on the pedal ah, that's good and boom -hoo -hoo, and you have to control the uh, power, power drift. Uh... How about Niels and Aris do have good dynamics nerd podcast? Niels is much better than me in terms of engineering. Uh, uh, Niels, in terms of engineering, is much more informed in terms of you know actual mathematical uh, uh, equations and stuff. Uh, he, he is better than me. I believe I am a little bit better than him in general experience and knowledge because of the very different cars we did. Uh, modesty apart, sorry Niels, but yeah, in terms of mathematical equations, he, he's a monster. I'm not even, you know, whoop. give Caesar what is Caesar. Uh, uh, I haven't played ACC online for fun, but I'm much lately because we do lots of testing, you know, internal. So, uh, but I will probably, as I said at the start of the stream, I will do that stuff. Uh, I will do a six hours race. Uh, 1st of February with driver uh, swaps uh, with uh, Kevin and Gergo together. Mm. All right, I think I think uh, yeah, I think we've done for for tonight sorry for the delay at the start of, of the stream i had a lot of a lot of actually i wasn't able to make a X split work with youtube it wouldn't connect maybe some issues with the uh with the drivers with the with their servers i don't know but it, simply it wouldn't it wouldn't connect uh so sorry about that we started an hour late uh with lots of issues uh but We've made it, uh, and now it's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and uh, I'm dead. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys, uh, for for joining me, for all your questions, for your patience to to go through these long uh, streams. As usual, in the following days, I will cut what is possible to to cut and uh, post uh, uh, small edits of the things that we we talk about. And uh, yeah, see you next uh, Friday. On for another stream. Thank you, everybody. Cheers.